Concept albums are all about creating a story. In those, the listener follows a story told chapter by chapter, song by song. As the singer or singers go into detail about the main character, their life story, ambitions and challenges. You get invested in those stories. Perhaps even see yourself in the shoes of the main characters in those concept albums. By the end of the day, when those albums come to a close, you're left with a bittersweet aftertaste or with a lingering nostalgia. Maybe even get extremely emotional after fully understanding the story. Concept albums are that impressive as storytelling devices and in this episode you and I visit, in case it's your first time, or revisit concept albums by male Sayu artists and to the groups that are outstanding and must be on your must-listen list. Let's kick off this episode of Sayu Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to See You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Best Concept Albums by Male See You and 2D Groups, the 2021 edition. This is a tie-up episode with the previous one about the rather recent niche trend of Seiyu artists, bands and 2D groups releasing concept albums. As you and I covered in the last episode, a concept album is an album whose songs hold a larger purpose or meaning collectively than they do individually. That is achieved through a simple central narrative or theme and both can be developed through the instrumental, composition or lyrics. This can be extremely complex or simple, depending on whether the focus was put in every element that makes a song, lyrics, instrumental and performances, or just some of the elements. Overarching stories prowl in these concept albums I chose to talk about in this episode. These are the best at the moment I recorded this episode that male Sayu artists and 2D groups have released. Concept albums that will make you look back to your life as a teenager. Long for the simplicity of a time before you weren't even born. Feel the anguish, determination and ambition to overcome themselves and everyone else. Go outside of the comfort zone, explore uncharted territory or live a fairy tale. Although not necessary, if you want to better follow along the stories I'll be talking about, I welcome you to check the description for links to all CDs. Without further ado, these are the best concept albums released by Male Sayu and 2D Groups up until now, 2021. Gran Rodeo was the first band among Sayu to embrace the concept album trend. Actually, they started it for Male Sayu. The band is well known for their versatility, fitting all music genres with natural, unique performances and exciting instrumentals that perfectly capture the essence of those genres, while still sounding like a trademark Gran Rodeo song. Kisho and Izuka, however, wanted to do something outside of the box for the band. They found in concept albums a new challenge that would put to test Kisho's storytelling skills as a lyricist and Izuka's ability to create cinematic soundscapes to complement those lyrics and give life to the stories unfolding. Their first concept album was MS Cowboy no Gyakushu, album released in 2018. The album revisited Modern Strange Cowboy, song released in 2009, and explored its world-building and storytelling, being the core influence to this concept album. Usually, concept albums explore themes or stories that its artists want to craft from scratch, so the fact that Gran Rodeo wanted to revisit a song of theirs and build an entire album around it was as unexpected as it was refreshing. Its intro instrumental track, Overture 2009, takes the listener back in time, with atmospheric synthpads and ethereal piano melodies giving off a hint of exploration and discovery. That's an interesting introduction that tells the listener that although exploring the world of an old song, it will feel like a completely new discovery, filled with new colors, stories and protagonists for you to follow. 
The title track created the first ripple in a new sonority for the band by bringing a mix of 70s funk, 80s city pop and jazz to create what is one of their most iconic songs in this concept album. The lyrics look back to the decade that had passed since the release of the song at the core of this album and looked into the future to wonder where we and the modern strange cowboy would be. Past, present and future meet in the following tracks with Itsuka no Kudeta putting the feet in the future and imaginary song going back to the past. This change in timelines will eventually collide in the last track of the album, but until then, the listener is left wondering where the modern Strange Cowboy story is going. The album changes tone in Vengeance, song that serves as an instrumental intermission that goes loud and aggressive. It's the turn of the page, leading to the end of the journey for you and the modern Strange Cowboy. And the story ends in such a sad note. Piano arpeggios paint a sorrowful soundscape and then strip you away from all excitement as the tone goes even more forlorn and the tension drops to give way to a beautiful power ballad. This odyssey is about to end. And Gran Rodeo pulled an epic song to wrap up this journey on an emotional note. Dreams and love you can't attain. Pain and regret linger because you can't let go. Living and being dead at the same time. Seeing life pass you by. When the song wraps up, you notice that the story of the modern strange cowboy is over. He's dying and everything in the lyrics points out just how much they regret not having done more, why they hesitated and at the same time leave you, the listener, with a story and a lesson do what you want to do now, and when it's time to die, do it with no regrets. Yep, that's a tragic story right there, one that showed just how impressive Gran Rodeo is as a creative team. Kisho's lyrics will have you weeping in the last seconds of the song, when you notice that this wasn't the ballad just for the sake of it. It was the death of a character. And Izuka absolutely nailed the environmental storytelling through crafty instrumentals that didn't prepare you for that twist. In 2021, the band released their second concept album, Boku Tachi no Gunzo. This was a simpler concept album focused on the themes of youth, nostalgia, love and loss and everything flowed incredibly fast, with seamless transitions between songs not signaling when a new chapter was starting. This time around, the band opted for not having an instrumental intro and instantly cut to the chase with a carefree pop rock track Mirai Sen o no Botte, that channels the excitement of youth, new discoveries and friendships. There's urgency, excitement and pure fun in this song, in a way giving back to you those middle or high school days. If you're actually living those days, this album will quite possibly not connect with you, as nostalgia is one of its selling points. Still, it would be interesting to know how current, middle or high schoolers would feel about this concept album. Orange Peel is the kind of song you'd want to play while on a drive during the summer. It is fun, simple, cozy, while upbeat in its funk rock sound. Mosso Grave embraces the themes of dreams and learning to let go. You're graduating, so those good times are coming to an end. You'll be leaving unrealistic dreams behind while still treasuring those. And in good Gran Rodeo fashion, the band inserts an intermission track signaling the end of this story. Sonoai Toshiwo perfectly illustrates the feelings of all that is good has come to an end and goes the emotional, nostalgic route in order to leave you in an emotional wreck. By the time this song wraps up, with Kisho's vocals sweetly lullabying you, you'll most likely be given that final blow that will make you cry. Bokutachi no Gunzo explores the themes of youth, love, not necessarily romantic, and loss, in a way that will crank up nostalgia to those already in their 20s or older, 
as this mini-album clearly nods at the simplicity and purity of life during high school. All songs were chapters in the story of a group of teenagers, however, it will connect so strongly with you if you're nostalgic of those times and when you notice, you're already seeing yourself in those stories. Gran Rodeo's concept albums have all ended up on a dramatic, bittersweet note, and the stories they explore are simple yet incredibly relatable, making it easy for their music to touch the listener and grab their attention from start to finish. Next one up, and also with two concept albums so far in his repertoire, is Shunichi Toki. The talented singer has a massive passion for jazz and 70s music, and with those two passions in mind, he released two crazy good concept CDs, a single and an album. Toki released his first concept CD, Party Jacker, in 2019. This is a single, and you usually would say concept albums, given their focus on story and the cohesive theme, would not work in a really brief CD, such as a three-song single, but Toki's first experiment was a solid appetizer for what would follow with the outstanding True Gazer. Party Jacker was more about its vibe than about its stories, hence this is an awesome CD to mention, because it illustrates how concept albums can be all about their sound telling the stories, the lyrics taking the spotlight, or the whole package creating those stories you'll be diving into. For this single, the focus lies in the instrumentals. Party Jacker takes the listener to a dimly lit jazz bar, as Shunichi Toki takes center stage to dazzle you with his vocals as a jazz band syncopates its way through the song in style. You can feel the warmth in that bar. You can feel the intimacy of that small venue. You're transported to the song's world and will enjoy every single bit of it. After a night in that jazz bar, you leave it with Toki and both enjoy the neon lights in the late night in Tokyo's skyline. The exploration is made through an 80s city pop inspired song in Afterglow. After wandering the streets of Tokyo, time for a last stop in this never-ending night. Time to visit a live house and Toki delivers a rocking performance in Time With You, signaling the end of this brief hangout with him. Think of Party Jacker as a late night spent with Shinichi Toki because it really feels like you're hanging out with him. Notice how the focus was not on a specific protagonist, but on taking you, the listener, on a journey, in this case a night, through the soundscapes and sights that Toki wants you to hear and feel. You ended up being the protagonist in this story and everything in the sound is made to take you from location to location. It's simple and it may lack a bit of depth, uh, three songs are not really enough to craft a rich overarching story, but for a first attempt, I believe it was a rock solid concept single. In 2020, Shunichi Toki went all out with the retro concept in True Gazer. And he kicked off this concept album on a strong note with the high octane 70s rock inspired True Gazer. Once again, Toki wasn't exploring a story in this concept album. Instead, he embraced the sound of the 60s and 70s and created an album that could have been released in those decades and you wouldn't even notice it was from 2020. Cheeky guitar riffs and organ melodies hinted at 70s pop and rock in adolescence. The tone is fun and the sound incredibly groovy, carrying itself with a lot of confidence towards Mr. Innocence. Performing 100% in English was a massive undertaking for Shunichi Toki, but he absolutely aced it at the same time that he added a lot of emotion to the instrumental, reminiscent of Eagles' Hotel California creating a song that perfectly belongs to the 60s. Ballads have always been a thing, but the 70s and 80s were particularly special for this type of performance. He delivered an impressive performance in Ashta Noarika. I don't know about you, but it felt like a proper nod to 70s and 80s rock music, yet approaching it from a modern lens. 
This mini album wraps up with Key, song that comes full circle, bringing back fast-paced rock with jazz influences to it. He didn't have a story to follow in this album, but the instrumentals fully embraced sounds and melodies of old, bringing those to our time, making those enjoyable to listen to and easy listening for younger fans of his. Shunichi Toki nailed the formula of concept albums, capturing eras or feelings exclusively through music. Daisuke Ono went the storytelling route for his concept album, Stargazer. Stargazer wasn't necessarily promoted as a concept album, but when you listen to it from start to finish, it is actually a proper concept album with opening, middle and ending. Stargazer is all about exploring the unknown and it follows the protagonist through their adventures from touchdown in an unknown place, from exploring it and leaving it to return home. The concept album kicks off with the instrumental track Hello, song with a dreamy soundscape stretching to infinity. Daisuke Ono's narration sets the stage for this journey into the unknown, following the story's protagonist Rocketman. The entrance is triumphant, energetic and filled of excitement in Rocketman. That feeling carries over throughout the funky and playful universal gravity. The Rocketman buddies up with someone during his journey in this crazy world is already in. However, that euphoria starts to die down as you progress through the album. Contact has been made with the unknown and the Rocketman in this story faces its first challenge. As a result, Firebird is a song with a dark tone. The soundscape is gritty, almost as if there is no hope. However, little by little, that hope appears and the song evolves into a dreamy pre-chorus in which ethereal scenes paint the soundscape. The chorus in Firebird is the climax of that hope. It's wide open and the instrumental makes its best to illustrate that sense of being in a massive location surrounded by epic, never-before-seen things. There's grit, but also a little bit of gentleness in the instrumental constantly clashing. In the middle of such a dark soundscape, there's hope. There's a dream and nothing will stop the Rocketman, or should I say, you, the listener, the buddy that the Rocketman found in the middle of his journey. You make your entrance in this story in Universal Gravity and fight alongside the Rocketman in the unknown, screaming on top of your lungs, fist raised in the air. This is a cinematic song and a, a turn of events in the story unfolding. Issue solved and it's time to hang out and enjoy the spoils of war or the new discoveries you made along the way. Deep and Holic embraces those feelings and adds a lot of elegance to it. Cell the Funky Alien carries over that celebratory vibe, riding into the sunset with your buddies making the best of the good times. Things change once again for dramatic, keeping you on your toes with these many ups and downs in the story and tone between each chapter in this overarching story. The tone in this song is filled with nostalgia as you gear up and set everything up for a final goodbye. As much as you want to put a strong front that you're okay with saying goodbye, you're already regretting the decision to return, crying, laughing, the adventures, the new friends made along the way, the adversity and victories, everything hits you at the same time. Dear is the perfect intermission track. When letter arrives, you know it's goodbye. The time is now, the acoustic sound on one ear and distant distorted guitars on the other illustrate your internal conflict. Stay or go. The emotional blow with this final chapter in your story with the Rocketman is bittersweet. You don't care if the journey or adventure was successful. You just want to hug everyone to make sure they don't go away. What a story. There's a reason why this is Daisuke Ono's best album to date. It's extremely well-crafted. The stories have interesting twists and turns. 
and the emotional depth to it is beyond everything is released before. Another album that wasn't advertised as a concept album, and yet it is, it's Makoto Furukawa's From Fairy Tale. Now, this is a massive album, both in length as well as in its story, and because of that it's split into two different story arcs. We have an overture, or intro, and we have an interlude. Those two instrumental tracks signal the changes in tone to the stories unfolding in From Fairy Tale. You start this journey going through a book, slowly passing the pages until strings, brass and timpani make their big entrance, setting a dreamy and fairy tale like tone to the very first act in this album. The first act will be told by Makoto Furukawa, the storyteller on stage, as his jazz band paints the pages of the twisted fairy tale going on. The elegance of jazz makes its big entrance in Mosaic to Fairy Tale, song with a frenetic pacing courtesy of bebop jazz. The storyteller tells you about injustice, karma, social status, a shady masquerade and much more, all while going through Dokeshito Sadness and miserable masquerade reply andante. Things toned down in the beautiful Latin-inspired speaker, signaling the end of this passionate and exciting chapter. The first story ends on a dramatic emotional way with the ballad Chisganakte Momodoro Kara. Notice how the music alone did storytelling for you. It started the first story on a high, with fast-paced jazz, but slowly toning down getting more emotional and pensive with each chapter. The lyrics by Makoto Furukawa added the characters to this song and explored each story in this fairy tale in pretty unique ways. You're now ready to put that book down and experience the side stories to that main story, this time around with a slightly darker and strangely suggestive tone. Kimamani Mierukai takes you through a picturesque soundscape while having a slightly alluring story going on, and equally alluring performance by Makoto Furukawa. The tone is playful and the tempo is comfortable. The alluring tone keeps going on in Patos no Katachi, song that brings back to the spotlight a Latin-inspired sound. Gusha no Choyaku breaks immersion for a bit by bringing fast-paced rock, but... Once again, this is a side story, a really fun one. And then, out of nowhere, you're back where you started, at the jazz bar. Night turns into day and jazz continues to play with no end in Honchitsumo Makoto ni Seten Nari. The storyteller brings the listener back from the lands of fantasy and dreams to reality. And you're off again to explore the fairy tales in hand. Kachidoki takes the listener in a journey through Japan, after going through picturesque landscapes and the warm and passionate sounds of Latin America. And back to reality again. The stories wrap up your good and bad times experiencing each chapter, each mini-story is over. For fairy tale as a solemn tone, embracing a piano and strings-driven ballad sound in which Makoto Furukawa's vocals fill the room. You put the book down and are immersed in his spine-chilling performance. What a crazy ride this album is. The first half of From Fairy Tale is made to dance like there's no tomorrow. The jazz music is frenetic and extremely punchy. It's like you're under a spell. The second part takes you to distant lands in its mini-stories, but the storyteller has, since the start, full control of how much your imagination can go crazy, because in two distinct moments, you're brought back to reality. From Fairy Tale does storytelling best through its combined formula of dreamy, rich instrumentals and Furukawa's quirky and bold lyrics. Yet another concept album that wasn't advertised as such is Soma Saito's In Bloom. This is quite possibly one of the most complex concept albums released up until now by Seiyu, as Saito went from the main theme, In Bloom, 
and wrote the lyrics, composed the songs and has all the art for the album following the same theme. Every beat in this album is storytelling. I've mentioned this album quite a lot this year and that's because it is easily one of the best albums released by Mail Seiyuu, right there at the top with Toshiyuki Toyonaga's music of the entertainment, but there's more to it than what meets the eye. There's a rawness in In Bloom that is spine-chilling. It is decadent, at times dramatic and emotional at others, mundane in some instances and downright sexy at others. Somosaito had the full control to create the music, lyrics and therefore the stories you'll be listening to unfolding in each chapter in this album. And although the album was not advertised as a concept album, the concept is obvious because it was stated by Somosaito himself during interviews. Underneath all the rock tunes and sexy songs, Somosaito explores a story or, more precisely, a dark and rather serious theme of beyond the end of the world. And that is the driving force behind all those stories. A collection of adventures of an unnamed protagonist that, despite Saito mentioning that it isn't necessarily him, the emotions carrying in some songs are too raw for something that would be supposedly invented for a fictional protagonist. The album kicks off with Carpool, a song that right off the bat carries a lot of melancholy and has a lingering sadness underneath. The protagonist in this story reads his diary, reliving those events. Going on a journey, making friends, time passing, losing touch, death and longing. However, something is wrong as the protagonist says, why can't I reach you? So what happened to the other character? And that's when, in good Somasaito fashion, the bomb is dropped. I'll catch up soon, so wait there. That person is no longer among us. The protagonist tells them to wait, that they'll soon meet. This last phrase can give off the idea that the protagonist has thought about dying to meet that person, which is a romanticized way to approach longing and perhaps love. If you're already shocked, let me tell you. The album gets even darker from this point on. Dead and alive at the same time, that's how things go in Schrodinger Girl, the subject of this song. This is actually a pretty unique song lyrics-wise, as you'll find yourself wondering why is Saito talking about quantum mechanics, Ouroboros, which is a term from Norse mythology, and Shangri-La. Basically, there's three main themes in this song, all connected, being dead and alive at the same time, eternity and a remote, beautiful, imaginary place where life approaches perfection, which is basically to say, a utopia. These can all be metaphors for death or life after death. Vampire Weekend is all about desire, attraction and seduction. The protagonist doesn't want to run away from the threat. He knows who the threat is and he still puts himself in danger because he can't resist their charms and the reward can be much, much sweeter than the danger. It goes to the point that the protagonist says they want to be deceived by the other person. Saito was completely obvious about making this song filled with innuendos in the lyrics, however, it does get explicit in some parts. Well, his fans wanted a sexy song, he gave them a sexy song. Kitchen is mundane, adding a grounding element to this album that, up until this point, is dark, decadent and filled with longing and danger. The lyrics are pure, unfiltered ramblings. It's almost as if you, the listener, is brought to reality for a bit while progressing in the main story unfolding. Feverish dreams and a lot of decadence mark the tone of Petricor. Petricor brings that humid smell after rain just fell into this song. It is a song that managed to summon that sensation into the mix in a clever way. From a feverish dream to euphoria, the listener comes across the carefree surfer rock tune Summerholic. After that, the tone grows darker and darker. 
palette is loud, raw and overflowing with emotion. Once again, the protagonist lost someone close to them, either to death or just because they lost touch. And that longing, sadness and frustration as they recall their memories hits like a truck. Nostalgia is all that's left. And it carries over to Bookmark, song that basks on memories of the past, this time with the protagonist being, obviously, Saito himself, recalling his college days. The vibe is relaxed, the sound is loungy and the performance is smooth at all times. It's almost like it is preparing the listener for the final chapters. If this is your first listen of the album, the next two songs will hit like a truck and quite possibly render you to tears. Up until this point, the album was all about passions, regrets, good memories, nostalgia and longing. With Canaria and Isana, we're talking about the end, facing death in the eye and coming back stronger than ever. Reinvent yourself. Bloom. I am particularly fond of the composition in Canaria as you start the song simple. Then a stripped down acoustic sound slowly works its way into being more and more intense. This is the beginning of the end and everything about the instrumental bids you goodbye. Its solemn and nostalgic mood sinks in and never leaves you. When the time comes for the Sana, you are mildly prepared for what waits you, but once again, in good somasito fashion, you get a strong punch in your emotions. This is a fatalistic song, the end of the road for the protagonist, or perhaps the start of something new after having a life-changing experience. Death is at center stage, it is ugly, it is dark, it is stifling, it slowly drowns you. The light is getting further and further away from you. It is the end. Isana is spine-chilling and it's not only because of the shoegaze rock instrumental that leaves you drowning to your death in song. It's those haunting, muffled, distant vocals that deal the final blow, that say the last goodbye, that send you off. The apparent contained way in which Saito performs that song carries so much more underneath and will render you to tears. You are in bloom. So grab the chance to change yourself, bloom into an improved version of yourself. And with that message, you grab a new chance at life and end up at Saigo no Hanabi, a romantic pop rock tune with a bit of nostalgia on top. The album's hidden track, I Say, signals a new era. With the birds chirping in the background, it seems like it is a new day. The protagonist overcame the day after the end of the world, and what awaits him is a new beginning, one with a much brighter outlook and vibe. In a way, this album explores all the ways in which you could approach what is beyond the end of the world. In another way, this album follows the story of one specific protagonist in a melancholic exercise of wanting to see those who are no longer here, wanting to forget past loves that didn't work, wanting to be seduced while knowing the dangers of that, dying and being reborn. And if you want to dive deeper, this is a highly personal album for Soma Saito, culminating with the message of I'm blooming. It can refer to himself now having complete creative freedom as a solo artist, able to spread his wings, or that something in his personal life changed and he decided as well to change, to bloom as a person. Essentially, In Bloom is an album about being human. All songs feel like a chapter in someone's life until the very end. However, with the twist that a happy ending can be possible after that much adversity. I know this is a rather simplistic way to put it, but it's ultimately what it is all about. Wow. This was the first time I went deep into the lyrics in In Bloom, and I can only reiterate what I've said countless times. Soma Saito is a wonderful storyteller and equally impressive composer. 
And yes, In Bloom is a really heavy and dark concept album, but its rich, well-developed stories and settings will grab your attention and never let go. Currently, the best concept album by Mail Sayu. One of the most intense concept albums in this list is Trigger's Variant. If you paid close attention to the previous episode, you may recall that I said that a CD with only one new song is not called a concept album. And Trigger's variant almost wasn't a true concept album, if not for one intro track and two new songs that give this 8-track album a lot of new stories to explore. This is a statement album that follows the storyline of the group within Idolish 7's overarching story. Without spoiling it, in case you haven't checked the project but are intending to, the trio is found in a situation in which it requires their all to fight against impossible odds to recover their status. Each song reflects that desire the frustrations, the anger, the undying confidence in their skills to overcome all that. Trigger's Variant is a statement album. It is dramatic, aggressive, raw and fragile in equal measures, and it packs quite the punch while being completely different from the music the group has released before. At the core of this album is a will to fight, a hunger to succeed, coming together, improving together to be the best version of themselves and be as cohesive and perfect as a unit as possible. Trigger pulled off every single one of those feelings, fleshing those out in a collection of songs that are intense, heartbreaking, fun, groovy and by the end of it all, an intimate, deep look at a group that wants to be at the top while facing impossible odds. Once again, the concept album formula strikes with the album kicking off with an instrumental track, setting the tone perfectly for what awaits everyone in Valiant, the most intense and aggressive song in the group's repertoire. All tracks gain a new life in this album, finally fitting their right places in the story being told. It's like a puzzle coming together. Now you do have those tracks going almost chronologically through the events, with nods at their past and with a hopeful look to the future ahead of them. In Variant, you notice the group's changes but also the common feelings that carry over from song to song chapter to chapter, culminating in Diamond Fusion. The phoenix rising from the ashes. That's the imagery I got when Variant came to a close. And with this, let's wrap up the talk about the best concept albums by male CU artists and 2D groups. As you can tell, concept albums come in all shapes and sizes. The focus can be in storytelling like Gran Rodeo's MS Cowboy no Gyakushu or Trigger's Variant. It can be in the instrumentals like in Shunichi Toki's True Geyser, be a mix of storytelling and music like in Makoto Furukawa's From Fairytale or Daisuke Ono's Stargazer, or even be extremely complex making sure lyrics, music, performances and art are all telling the same story, like in Soma Saito's In Bloom. There really are no limits to what concept albums can have at their core or even achieve. One thing we can all agree in, concept albums are like books, taking us on a ride through unique stories that makes us feel ups and downs in emotions, root for the protagonists, be the protagonists ourselves, Feel those stories and bask in the quality of the music and lyrics that some Seiyu artists and bands create. If you've never listened to a concept album and everything I said in this episode didn't make much sense to you, I welcome you to pick whichever album I mentioned and listen to it 
without hitting the pause button. Just let yourself sink in those stories. No interruptions. You'll go through the ride of your life without leaving your seat. That's the beauty of concept albums, but hey, I may be a suspect when I say this because I love narratives and albums with overarching stories that connect with me. Now tell me, do you have a favorite concept album by male CU or 2D groups? If you do, what is it that you love about it and believe other people would enjoy as well? Let me know in the comments and remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Say You Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail Say You and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.